The last three examples in this uh, video series looked at going from the Z domain back to the time domain, just kind of the mechanics of doing the inverse C transform. Now we're going to turn our attention to a handful of problems related to the transfer function of discrete time linear system. So let's talk a little bit about the transfer function. We know in the time domain how the input and output of a discrete time linear system are related. It's via this equation right here. It's what I call the convolution input output equation. If you tell me the impulse response of the system h of k and you tell me the input signal x of k, I can compute the output y of k by convolving those two signals. And that star right there is the convolution symbol that we use. We've talked about how convolution in time is multiplication in z. So if we take this equation I've circled into the z domain, we end up with this nice input-output relationship. It says that the output in the z domain is related to the input in the z domain via multiplication by h of z. If you solve for h of z and move the x over here, you can see that h of z is the ratio of y of z to x of z. So it's written like this. And this is a very important quantity. You've seen something similar to this before, I'm sure, when this is written in the frequency domain as a function of f or omega, we call it the frequency response of the system. And this quantity you know, describes the linear system in the frequency domain. Now we are in the z domain, we give it a slightly different word, we call it the transfer function of the system. However, this quantity h of z is still very important and gives us a lot of information. It is just doing it in a different domain. It's doing it in the z domain. So in this and the next couple examples, we are going to work with, you know, how do you find the transfer function? What can you do with the transfer function? What information can you glean from the transfer function, etc.? In that these are the three examples that we'll be working. In this video, we're going to work this first example. I'm going to give you a difference equation, which is a time domain or description of a discrete time system. And from that difference equation, we are going to find the transfer function. So we're going to compute the transfer function from the difference equation representation. So let's go ahead and work this problem. Let's find the transfer function. And we are going to consider a causal LTI system, so linear time invariant system. And it is, it is described by this difference equation right here. y of k minus 1 fourth y of k minus 1. Well, you can read the difference equation right there that relates the input x of k to the output y of k. And we are asked to find the transfer function h of z and the impulse response h of k. So if we have both of these, this is a time domain description via the impulse response. And this is a z domain description of the system via the transfer function. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can do that pretty easily by taking this difference equation into the z domain term by term. So y of k becomes y of z. y of k minus 1 is just y of z times z to the minus 1, right? That's what our z transform property says. It's just y of z times z to the minus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and just factor out y of z because all of these terms are going to have a y of z. For this second term, I have minus 1 fourth z to the minus 1. For the second term, I'm going to have minus 3 eighths z to the minus 2, because this is delayed by 2. So that's exactly what I have there. And then something very similar here on the right side of the equation as I transform that. All of these are going to have an x of k, but they're going to have different powers of z and different coefficients. This first one is going to have a coefficient of minus 1, because there's a minus 1 right there. And then this one is going to be 2 z to the minus 1 due to that time shift right there. So kind of writing it down already in factored form is kind of nice, I think, because now I can go ahead and solve for the ratio y of z over x of z very easily by just dividing both sides of the equation by x of z. And that tells me what h of z is, because remember how we defined h of z. It's that ratio y of z divided by x of z. So if I do that, I can go ahead and move this over here as well by dividing both sides of the equation by that. And at this point, I have my transfer function. There is an expression for the transfer function that I was asked to find. I'm done with that part. The next part we want to find, though, is h of k. So this gives us some more practice going from the z domain back into the time domain. Since we want an equation for h of k for all time, I almost have to do partial fraction expansion to get that equation. So I'm going to decompose this 
as follows. So first, let's factor the denominator. The denominator does indeed factor nicely into this product right here. And then I can decompose that as a over the first term plus b over the second term. And now all I need to do is PFE to find the constants a and b. So let's do that over here. So we solve for a by um, multiplying both sides by the term that's not on the denominator of a, and then evaluating at z equals negative 2 to make the term for b go away. So this is what we've done many a time, so we're going through this a little bit faster than normal. If you haven't done PFE yet, go back a few videos in the playlist and watch those examples to kind of see the pattern for how you do that, but it's pretty straightforward. After I plug in that value for z on the numerator, I have a negative 1 minus 4, and on the denominator, I have 1 plus 3 halves. If you plug that in and add it up, you end up with a negative 2. And then very similar strategy for b. Multiply both sides by the term that isn't at b and plug in the value that makes the a go away, which is this value right here, right? That value of right there, you can tell, makes that um, go to 0, which turn, turns off the a term on the previous chart. So plug that in for z to the negative 1. We end up with that on the numerator. Replace z to the negative 1 with 4 thirds on the denominator. We end up with that. Simplify just a little bit algebraically. You have 5 thirds over 5 thirds, which is 1. And now we know how to write h of z in a uh, more convenient form for sure. It's been expanded into these two terms. There's a times the first term plus b times the second term. And the reason I like this expanded form much better is because I know how to take that back to the time domain just by a table lookup. Similarly, that term I can take back to the time domain very easily. And we can go ahead and do that now because we know the system is causal. If I didn't know anything else about the system, when I took this term and this term back to the time domain, I wouldn't know if I should do a right-sided signal or a left-sided signal. However, in the problem statement, it said that it was a causal system. If it's causal, that means it goes to the right. So I have to choose right-sided signals when I do these inverses. So let's go ahead and do that. H of k is just a negative 2 times whatever you see there, negate it and raise it to the k. So that's what I did. And then same thing right here. A negative 3 fourths becomes 3 fourths to the k, u of k. So we've also used PFE to get back to the time domain. And I've solved for the impulse response of this causal system. All right, that's it for this example. We worked an example where given a difference equation, we found the transfer function and impulse response of the system using the Z-transform. In the next examples, we'll do different combinations of things. We'll start with the transfer function and go back to a difference equation, or maybe we'll start with input-output pairs and actually solve for the transfer function directly. So keep watching for some more practice with the Z-transform.